when you have executives that are running a company and don't understand the business, right? Um, it's really hard to put teams in place or educate customer service to do it the right way. So when you're getting a message like this from Uber, and sadly, sadly, the driver pays the price, right? It's called a deactivation, and it's hard to get back in. But here they say, we received that your vehicle smelled like marijuana during a recent trip. Um, wherever this email originated from, probably over in Manila, Philippines, or Bogota, Colombia, that's where the two centers are, they send you this sort of cut and paste, oh, here's the complaint, right? What they don't understand is that you are constantly, throughout the day, having people come in and out, and very, very often, these people reek of smoke or marijuana, or even try to vape or light a cigarette or a joint in your car, right? And if the next person gets in, which these, person, which these people don't understand, the next person gets in and just gets the slightest hint or the slightest little sniff or smell in their nose that something's off. Oh, it's smoke or marijuana. You to blame. You caused this, right? And, and that is the, one of the big problems within the company at, that there are these murky guidelines, right? If something like this happens, this is the way you have to handle it. Deactivate them. They cannot read between the lines. They don't understand boots on the ground, street level, how it works, what happens in the car, what type of people rotate through the car on a weekend, during the week, and you get punished for this, right? Now, we do have a system in place at Gig Rocket. I'll leave the link below where you can uh, fight these wrongful marijuana or smoke or alcohol um, you know, false reports. My advice is that go and get yourself, you know, a test, a drug test right away, whether it's alcohol test or drug test or hair follicle test right away so that you're covered. This just wasn't you, right? You didn't do this. This is one idiot that came through your car or it's just pure retaliation. I'm not going to pay for this fare. I don't like this driver. This is what I'm going to smack them with, Right. So it says, yeah, our community, uh, we received feedback that your vehicle smelled like marijuana during a recent trip. Um, our community guidelines prohibit illegal activity, including using drugs and driving under the influence. So they, they're blaming you here because driving, the ride is not driving, right? Driving under the influence while using Uber apps. Given odor can be an indication of impairment. So this is how they see it, right? Oh, you're impaired. It smells like marijuana. You're impaired. You're to blame. Meanwhile, three trips ago, the guy tried to light, light a joint in your car. And they have no clue because these people have no understanding whatsoever how this business works. Forget about customer support. They're in another country. They have no idea how the business works. Daryl Koshashawi uh, their executives, their 40 million salaries, they have no idea what happens in a car. Has Dara driven on a full Saturday night and walked into this problem, right? Where maybe the rider in the car, Dara had an individual in the car, or Andrew McDonald or Tony West. Have you ever tried to get involved in this business and understand how this business works? Because if you are doing a full Friday or Saturday night, somewhere along the line, is going to be a hint of smoke or marijuana in your car. And you're not to blame. So if they would actually learn the business and understand that riders come into the car and do this, they would not go out and have to deactivate you instantly. Because there is a process in, 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 in their minds that they think work that works, it doesn't work. They have trained these individuals up. You hear this word, you deactivate them or you warn them. And it is associated with a driver. This has nothing to do with the driver at this point. 95 or 98% of the time. Guaranteed. But they don't understand it. Right? So given odor can uh, be an indication of impairment, your access to the app has been disabled while we investigate. Right? So how are you going to investigate 
right? If four, five, or 15 trips ago, there was a guy that lit up a smoke or a joint in your car, how are you gonna investigate that, right? No, oh, hang on, it smells like marijuana, has to be the driver, we are going to disable them and deactivate them. And we're going to go and investigate. What are you investigating? Right? You're going to go back to the right and say, oh, are you sure you smelled marijuana? Absolutely I did. Okay, we leave the driver deactivated. This is what we have to fight. Right? This is, this is you know, this is the hard work um, that we have to do and fight those falsehoods. And my advice is, if something like this comes your way, immediately off the way, Google closest drug test, alcohol test, hair follicle test, get it done. Yes, it's going to cost you 100 bucks, but it's going to save you. It's going to save you ultimately when you present those facts in small claims court. Because when our legal letters go out to them, we say, hey, if you don't comply, and very often they think, oh, you know, we have enough evidence. We're not going to comply. We're not going to reactivate you. We warn them what is coming down the pipeline, namely a small claims court lawsuit against them for the max. Sometimes it's 10,000 in California, 15 or 25,000 in other states. Arizona, I think, or, 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 or Arizona, I think it's only 3,500 or 5,000. But you go in and claim the max and you negotiate your account back. And in mediation, you show them that you have taken a test and that all of this garbage is wrong. It's fabricated because they don't understand the fundamentals of this business, right? So please note reports of this nature can be result, result in permanent loss of access. In the meantime, we're going to keep you disabled, right? A decision on the status of your account will be communicated soon. BS! You don't communicate anything soon. You leave them hanging and hanging and hanging because you don't want any legal repercussions. So they will keep you disabled. Or you'll get a letter a week or, or an indica a, a text or a message a week later, you've been deactivated. And then you have to fight back. It's sad. It's true. I see it every day. Numerous of times we fight it every single day. If you have any questions about this, if this has happened to you, if you have been wrongfully accused, please reach out to us and leave a message underneath so I can get back to you. Have a good one.